You want to understand what's happening in reality better? Go to the movies. You will leave with a new respect for what's happening and what is not happening in our politics. Barbie and Oppenheimer, specifically, very different movies. Both serve a purpose, though, of reminding us what we're obsessed with and what we are dangerously avoiding. First, Barbie, obviously the easier watch, right? Also the easier takeaway. Once you see the movie, it will be obvious to you that these attacks about how Barbie is the tip of the spear of some woke wave in America, Hollywood trying to ruin our values, it's an obvious and awkward stretch of argument. But more importantly, it shows the desperation of those whose agenda is to divide. Look, do you want to talk about why they have the dotted lines and the map and all that? I'll go through it with Steyerwalt. But at bottom, this is a harmless, entertaining movie with some clever aspects. It's not a cultural assault or in code. You know, if you think about it, Barbie has always had her haters. <laughs> I've never really understood why people put so much attention on a doll. But this, what's happening now, is ugly and obvious. Um, what people want you to think, want you to feel, no matter how strained it is, okay? They want you to see problems. They make us identify with fringe fears and points of fixation that are really just ways to slice us into pizzas and to make them stronger, and as a result, the nation weaker. Then you must watch Oppenheimer, okay? It explores the invention of the atomic bomb, but more importantly, the implications of the development in the absence of, absence of thinking about what it would mean other than advantage. It is such a slap in the face and a reality check of what we're again not doing that matters most, okay? We use the right language, right? In service to these culture wars and calculated sideshows, right? Dangerous time, uh, you know, uh, awesome power and how we wield it. But we take it out of context, right? And then the real issue that we're talking about will be something petty ante. There is a real danger that is all around us and it needs to be addressed. But it's just not found in a fugazi fight over who decides to wear a dress. We are ignoring the big questions. What happened to the middle class and why? Why don't our leaders ever debate that? Why don't they ever talk to you about it? What's the goal of incarceration? You ever hear anybody talk about that who wants to lead us? What they think? Who should go to prison and why? Instead of tough on crime, right? You sell drugs, you're gone for the rest of your life. They talk to you about it in platitudes, not policy. There's no philosophy anymore. There's no real talk about what the principles are that matter. How do we make more useful workers? There's no philosophy driving it, no principled direction. We wonder why we're all having our information stolen, constantly having our conversations used for marketing and censorship is definitely out there. But the issue becomes reduced to finger pointing. They're doing it. They like it. No, they like it. Nobody wants to take it on. Why? Because that's hard. Nobody wants to deal with hard questions, just like during the atomic bomb development. Just because we could, did that mean that we should? And you know what? Just like then, today, those in power don't have to deal with the hard questions because they're allowed to make mountains out of molehills, even if it means ignoring actual volcanoes. Wrestling with hard questions, like if we can do something, does that mean we should do it? That's hard. AI. It's a boogeyman. Why? Why just dismiss it that way? Because it's hard to figure out where it should be and where it shouldn't. How do we deal with content moderation on social media? Well, what are these uh, places? What is, what is threads? What is Twitter? What is uh, Instagram? Because they're not publishers. You should, certainly don't treat them like News Nation. So who has the responsibility? What is the responsibility? What are the guidelines? Who tells us and how do we keep track of it? Nobody wants to deal with that. They have hearings. They took care of nothing. Cloning is exploding. And it goes in all these different directions. What's okay? What isn't? When does life begin? Instead of a cheap argument about who respects life, and I'm pro-life like anybody's anti-life, why don't we deal with the hard part of defining what that actually means and how it's reflected and what we allow in our society that goes way beyond a single medical procedure? If you watch these two movies, Barbie and Oppenheimer, man, are they food for thought. Barbie about how forced fringe woke worries can be. 
And Oppenheimer reminds of how we have abandoned the aspect of moral responsibility in the name of progress for self-defense or some temporary suggestion of principle or advantage, just like we did then. It is horrifying watching the movie. And it will remind you that we got to have better leaders. We have to have leaders who don't hide from what's hard, who investigate issues that matter the most and to the most of us, not this stuff that we're dealing with now. We increasingly in this country have leadership that avoids doing what's hard and we're okay with it because they keep bamboozling us into going down these false corridors. And often I'm there running right behind trying to catch up to tell everybody, slow down. Do you wanna know why things got so complicated and confrontational during the pandemic? How we ever wound up not all on the same page when we were all under attack by the same thing? Watch Oppenheimer. And you'll see how when there's a leadership vacuum and no real discussion about principles and priorities, how quickly people can get carried away with reckonings of science and doubt and replacing principles and philosophy and methodology with popularity and pressure from opponents. You can get to a bad place real fast, and we did, and it ain't the first time. There's a real argument to be made that we should have never dropped those bombs on the Japanese in World War II. And you should struggle with your part so that you can give yourself a chance of making better determinations going forward. We are too often in America in the doomed to repeat category. And for what it's worth, Barbie is definitely a relief, except for Ryan Gosling's abs, which made me feel like a pig. And Oppenheimer is incredibly powerful storytelling. It will probably have a big footprint at the Oscars and for good reason. And do you think you know Killian Murphy from Peaky Blinders? Think again. Do you think you know Robert Downey Jr. from Iron Man? Think again. Blow away performances that should, you know, remind all of us, we need our artists. We need them doing and showing us things that we would not realize or have impact us emotionally otherwise. The only thing that outshines the performances is the realization that we haven't really learned that much since our atomic bomb determinations. We're still not wrestling with hard questions, instead being distracted by de minimis divisions. Go to the movies and you'll understand a lot better what's going on outside the theater.